This conference will now be recorded. Hello everyone. Last day we have seen that uh, we have started basically chemical properties of uh, aldehyde and ketones and there are different types of chemical properties possible for aldehyde and ketones. The first type that we have seen is nucleophilic addition and under these two reactions we have already discussed one is addition of uh, CN minus ion another one is addition of NaHSO3. Now regarding NaHSO3 one application of the of this reaction we have discussed which is that this can be used for purification purpose of aldehyde and ketones. Now based on this fact we will see one problem which is this one the reagent used for the separation of acetaldehyde from acetophenol okay so here we have to separate acetaldehyde now acetaldehyde having structure is ch3 c double bond o h and acetophenol is ph in co ch3 now when we are uh, considering these two this one is ketone and acetaldehyde is aldehyde now when it is aldehyde another one is ketone we have to choose one such reagent which can react only with one because if it reacts with both of them we will not be able to separate them here we have reagent nhso3 c6h5 nh nh2 which is nothing but phenyl hydrazine ph nh nh2 hydrazine is having formula n2h4 and uh, when we are saying phenyl hydrazine then the formula will be ph nh nh2 Another reagent is NH2H hydroxylamine and the last reagent NaOH plus iodine. Now NaOH plus iodine, this is the reagent we use from halophone reaction and halophone reaction is uh, positive when there is COCHT group present. Now this COCHT group is present in both the compounds, so this reagent will not be able to distinguish them. Now pH NH NH2, which is also uh, that is a type of uh, ammonia derivative. If, if you consider ammonia molecule NH3, if you just replace one hydrogen with pH NH, it is basically pH NH NH2. So this can react with any of these two carbonyl compounds, whether it is ketone or acetaldehyde, it is not important. Then NH2H, this can, this is also another uh, derivative of ammonia. If you replace one hydrogen of ammonia with OH group, you get this molecule NH2H hydroxyl amine. Now ammonia and its derivatives, how this can be used uh, as nucleophile that is nucleophilic addition that we will discuss separately but right now just focus on this reagent NHSO3 because that is the reaction we have last discussed NHSO3. NHSO3 as you can see here the actual nucleophile is SO3 minus. Now this nucleophile it is large in structure. Now when it is large in structure you have to consider the steric hindrance problem. Now aldehydes they are always sterically less hindered compared to ketone because in ketone we have group both side RCO R prime but when it is aldehyde it is RCO H so this side we have very small group so steady problem if we consider that will be more in case of ketone less in case of aldehyde so that is why when you consider NHSO3 it will always prefer acetaldehyde to attack compared to uh, acetophenone that means it will react with acetaldehyde not with acetophenone so in this way we can separate acetaldehyde from acetophenone. So in this case what we will do, we will take the mixture of these two. So suppose acetaldehyde is A and this one is B. So A plus B, we have this mixture, right? We will do what reaction? NHSO3. We will add this. Now it will react only with A, not with B. Now once it is uh, reacting, the compound that we will get this one CHT CHOH SO3 Na fine now as we are getting this molecule and this reaction it has reversible character so when you do hydrolysis in acidic condition then we can get back the original aldehyde so first there will be formation of this type of compound SO3 Na then we have to do acidic condition hydrolysis and we can get back and acetophenone it will be uh, intact as it is there will be no reaction because it will always prefer to attack in a which is acetaldehyde aldehyde rather than ketone because of steady problem so further we will get back a 
in the original form in this way we can purify it and remember this molecule this addition product as it is in sodium salt form it is basically water soluble so that is why as it is water soluble the other compound which is b it, it is in salt format okay the other one it is not in salt format so we can easily separate it so here the reagent that will be used for the separation of acetyl dihydrophenone is this one though in the previous case we have seen that uh, it is detained aldehyde and ketones they form addition compounds that is both can form addition compounds with nhso3 but remember here we have the two mixture that is two compound mixture acetaldehyde and acetophenone both are actually carbonyl compound it is true that both can react with nhso3 but you also have to remember when there is presence of acetaldehyde which is sterically less in that structure any gso3 it will always prefer to attack acetaldehyde okay so that is why correct option would be option 1 now the third reaction after first two addition reaction nucleophilic addition one is cyano addition cn minus another one is na gso3 now the third reaction is addition of alcohol in this case alcohol will be the nucleophile because we are discussing nucleophilic addition. So nucleophile is the alcohol. When an aldehyde and ketone is treated with two equivalents of an alcohol in presence of an acid catalyst, then acetals, what is acetal? Acetal is basically geminal diether derivative of aldehyde or ketone that will be formed. So look at this reaction. This may be aldehyde or ketone both sides there is any group it is a general structure in uh, that is presence of roh which is alcohol and h3o plus it means it is acidic condition now roh this is actually the nucleophile first it will attack see here the or part that is in red color so only or will be added and as a result this c double bond o there will be negative charge over oxygen and this proton in black color that will be added here so what we are getting we are getting oh and or group attached to c so this type of molecule which is not the final product but first it will be formed and it is known as hemiacetal but as it is mentioned with two equivalents of alcohol that means one is to two ratio mole ratio is one is to two one is for the carbonyl compound and two is for the alcohol first there is formation of hemiacetal now the second equivalent that will also be added now this oh is also now replaced by or finally you are getting acetal so this type of structure is known as acetal and it is basically geminal diether first of all geminal it means when same groups are attached to the same carbon then it is called geminal and it, it is ether because ether means what coc linkage must be present and here you can see roc that means this is also coc linkage and two coc linkage that is why it is diether derivative ketone derivatives of this kind were once called ketones. Now, instead of taking aldehyde, if you take ketone, there is a time when it is called ketal. That is the name term ketal for ketones and acetal for aldehydes. But nowadays, the modern use is that this term is no longer used. Now, for both the types, whether you are getting the geminal diether derivative from acetaldehyde or ketone, it doesn't matter anything. The name is always same, and the name is acetal. So, ketal. That term you can find in some question or in some books, but this is the modern concept that only the term acetal is used, not ketal. Hemiacetal is formed here as intermediate, that is after the addition of first equivalent of alcohol during the formation of acetal, but this is not the final product. Now see here we have general structure for hemiacetal, which is basically carbon attached to two groups. It may be aromatic or alkyl group and one OH, one OR group. But when it is acidal, now there are two OR group because it is geminal diether and these two groups as it is. So this is a difference between hemiacetal and acetal. In hemiacetal, you still have one OH, but in acetal, there is no OH. Here, acid catalyst is very important because if you do not use acid catalyst, then ROH, which is basically the nucleophile, this is actually very weak nucleophile, but only in presence of catalyst, it can be, it can act as 
uh, strong nucleophile. So that is the purpose of using catalyst. Now in this reaction, water is basically released because this HO that will be released. So byproduct is water. Now this water, which is produced as byproduct, that must be removed from the reaction medium because if it is still there, what will happen? As the reaction is equilibrium, it is having equilibrium type of nature. So the acetal which is formed, this is our desired product, but there is also water present. But if you are not removing the water, what will happen? This acetal, it will further react with H2O and you will get back the original starting material. So if your purpose is to make acetal, you have to remove this byproduct, which is water. So equilibrium will be shifted towards right hand side. Here we have an example. We have taken CH3CHO, which is acetaldehyde. HCl is the acid catalyst and two methanol molecules are taken because it is one is to two reaction. What we are getting? We are getting, see, just compared with this structure because this is the general structure of acetal. Here we have CH3 group and H. So R1 and R2 is CH3 and H and OR3 is basically OCH3. And this is known as acetaldehyde dimethyl acetal because it is acetal of acetaldehyde molecule. And the R group that is coming from alcohol that is methyl. So that is why acetaldehyde dimethyl acetal. Though here the IUPAC name that is also given 1 1 dimethoxy ethane. So this is one carbon, this is two carbon. So one, two, longest chain, two carbon. So ethane and it is alkane derivative. But at one position, there are two uh, alkoxy group. And the alkox alkoxy means OR group. And the OR group in our case is OCH3. That is why the name 1,1-dimethoxy ethane. Okay. Now this reaction as it has reversible nature, there is equilibrium sign. So suppose if you have started with cyclopentanone, you are treating with two methanol molecules in presence of acid catalyst. First, there will be uh, formation of this type of geminal diether. But if water is not removed, if it is still present, excess amount, what will happen? Now the reverse reaction will take place and what you will get? You will get back the original starting material, which is this ketone and two molecules of methane. So that is the reason uh, you should remove uh, water as soon as it is formed as side product in this range. So the hemiacetal and acetal that you have seen in the last slide, they are not cyclic, but sometimes cyclic hemiacetal acetal formation is also possible. When it is possible, when the alcohol, which we are using as nucleophile from outside, this alcohol, if it is part of the original substrate, then cyclic hemiacetal acetal formation possible. So molecules which have alcohol group and carbonyl group, both, they can undergo intramolecular reaction to form cyclic hemiacetal. So here we have one alcohol, one aldehyde. Normally what we take, two is to one. That is the ratio of alcohol and carbonyl compound 2 is to 1. But in this case, we have 1-1 one, one group. So that is why we will end up with hemiacetal. So this molecule is hemiacetal. Just look at this carbon. To this carbon, there is one R group. Another R group is H, one OH. And this side, we have ether. So this is why uh, it is hemiacetal. And uh, hemiacetal formation, you will also see in case of uh, glucose molecule. Glucose, it can uh, remain in cyclic format, in non-cyclic format. Now, if you consider this structure, that is a Fischer projection, here we have this acetaldehyde group, sorry, aldehyde group, right? And just consider this carbon. So, this OH will act as nucleophile, not the last OH, okay? So, this OH it is a part of the same molecule so it will attack here as a result c double bond will be broken now if we number the carbon atoms you will be able to understand what will be the ring size if it is one 
टू थ्री फोर फाइव एंड दिस ऑक्सीजन इज अटैकिंग सो ओसी बॉन्ड फॉर्मेशन सो दिस ऑक्सीजन इज सिक्स दैट मीन्स यू विल गेट अ सिक्स मेंबर ट्री राइट एंड there will be hemiacetal formation because we have only one alcohol one aldehyde if it is two alcohol molecules two aldehyde then it will be acetal but we have only one oh one acetal uh, aldehyde group so that is why there this is the oxygen which is basically this oh oxygen and this oh is basically this carbonyl carbon now it is converted to oh and the carbon where this arrow is indicating this carbon is basically this carbonyl carbon okay so this is the new bond new oc bond which is formed if you look at this carbon carefully you will see there are one ether group so this side we have ether group then one oh group one h and another side we have uh, this cc linkage so it is basically having similarity with hemiacetal dipole structure now another important fact if you have taken alcohol molecule like this where two oh group are present in same molecule so basically for one carbonyl we need two oh group but if there is you, you have taken any compound which is already having two oh group so you don't have to take two separate oh right two separate alcohol molecules not required in this case these two oh present in same molecule so that is why it will uh, first one oh will attack hemiacetal will be there then another oh will attack so ultimately it this type of cyclic acetal will be formed so this part it is basically coming from acetone and the other part that is o ch2 ch2 o that is coming from ethylene glycol that is h o ch2 ch2 o h number 4 reaction is addition of grignard reagent but here we will not discuss it elaborately because details discussion for this uh, topic you will already get in the previous chapter that we have already finished which is alcohols phenols and ether so in alcohol phenols and ether chapters in the part of preparation of alcohol there are different methods discussed for synthesis of alcohol and one of these method is using grignard reagent that is uh, nucleophilic addition of grignard reagent to aldehyde or ketone so you are getting different types of alcohol secondary tertiary so this is the preparation method of alcohols which is basically uh, the same discussion that is in this case it is chemical properties of aldehyde or ketone because from chemical aldehyde and ketone molecules as they are the starting material we are using in this reaction starting material is aldehyde ketone aldehyde or ketone and grignard so that is why it is chemical properties of aldehyde or ketone and the product is alcohol so from product point of view it is basically preparation of alcohol but ultimately it is same thing so that is why uh, it is not separately discussed here you will find that in that chapter now here we will discuss one problem which is basically uh, you will see here different reactions are that is all the concepts you will find here starting material is cc triple bond that means it is alkyne and final product is y but before formation of final product first there is formation of x and the reagent is hgso4 h2so4 h2o so this type of reagent which is basically hg2 plus ion remember it is actually hydration reaction of cc triple bond and this method we have uh, this reaction we have discussed under the heading of preparation methods of ketones right so in preparation methods of ketones starting material alkyne then we are using h2o hg2 plus and acidic medium so first there is addition of oh and h that is net addition of water to cc triple bond so it is according to markovnikov so oh will be added to this carbon and h will be added to the terminal carbon so what you will get you will get enol type of structure because cc double bond is still there now the enol will be converted to ketone so that is why x is basically ketone now once ketone is obtained next reagent we are using c2h5mgbr and water that means first there is addition of grignard reagent ethyl magnesium bromide and then the second step of grignard is 
hydrolysis by water so water is mentioned so when you are treating x which is ketone with grignard you will get alcohol so alcohol next reagent used concentrated h2so4 so dehydration reaction will be there so final compound we know that alcohol molecules when it is undergoing dehydration there is formation of cc double bond so that is why you can see in all the structures there is a uh, double bond present right in all the options alkene molecules now which one is the correct structure for the final product why that we have to see now if which is added to this carbon because according to markovnikov the negative part of the reagent will be added to that carbon which is containing lesser hydrogen so this carbon is containing this large group that means no hydrogen is attached and the other carbon is containing one hydrogen so h the negative part will be added to left hand side carbon now if it is added like this what we will get i am writing the two methyl group like this me2ch oh double bond ch2 but this will not remain in this format because it is enol there will be ketoenol tautomerization so you will get me2ch coch3 now once you get it next there will be so this is x from this enol you will get this x after tautomerization next etmg bar is added so this is the alkyl part it will be acting as nucleophile there will be oh and c this is the ethyl group and finally concentrated h2 so forth. so oh will be protonated right so after protonation you will get this type of carbocation and look at this carbocation this is 3 degree right so it is already 3 degree so further rearrangement not required and this hydrogen it will be removed in the form of uh, that is minus h plus so ultimately there will be formation of cc double bond so this cc double bond it is actually matching with option 3 right so here we have applied the concept of grignard uh, addition which is uh, you can consider chemical properties of aldehyde or ketones or preparation method of aldehyde from both point of view it is correct and also the hydration reaction of cc triple bond which is ultimately produced in ketone and dehydration concept three different reactions are used in the same problem in the following reaction see this reaction we are using carbonyl compound and methanol in presence of hcl we are getting acetal so this reaction we have just used, uh, discussed rate of this reaction is highest for which of these option so one option will be correct now the carbonyl compound that is mentioned in the question it may be aldehyde it may be ketone now look at the options the first option is saying acetone as substrate methanol in excess acetone is basically ketone and the second option is propanal so acetone is ch3coch3 and propanal is again three carbon but now it is aldehyde this is the different difference between these two now if we have to consider that option which is giving highest rate for this reaction now keep it keeping all the other conditions same that is methanol hcl if you are keeping this reagent fixed and if you compare acetone and propanol which one is more reactive that is the general mechanism of nucleophilic addition if we consider for carbonyl compounds from steric point of view obviously aldehyde will we know what ketone remember the rate of reaction nucleophilic addition one slide we have discussed in last class where we have seen there are two factors electronic factor if you consider this carbon its electropositive character is high and from steric point of view also aldehydes are more reactive compared to ketone so propanol is always favored now if propanol is favored option three that is also related to propanol option for again acetone so one and four acetone and the difference is in one methanol excess but here methanol stoichiometric stoichiometric mean, means acetone and methanol one is to one and option one acetone methanol methanol excess similarly two and three these two are related to propanol but in option two it is one is to one stoichiometric but in three it is excess 
Now remember the mechanism of uh, acetyl formation. When you are using the first equivalent of methanol, there is formation of, if I write the general structure of carbonyl compound. This is general, that is the, any group may be present. It is not acetyl. So first alcohol, when it will be added, there will be formation of hemiacetal. But you can get acetal only when you are adding the second ROH. Then only you can get acetal. Now second ROH when you are adding, that means you are add, adding alcohol in excess. So stoichiometric will not be correct. You have to do it excess. So in that, if that is true, then option two and four, stoichiometric mentioned, so these two cannot be correct. Now we are stuck between one and three. Now among one and three, in both cases, methanol excess, but propanol will be correct option because propanol is more reactive than acetone because it is aldehyde and acetone is ketone. So option three will be the correct option. So aldehydes are more reactive than ketones in nucleophilic addition reaction. So that is why rate of reaction with alcohol to form acetal and ketal, if we consider, this is always more reactive. So based on that also, you can uh, cancel one and four and among two and three, three will be correct because we have methanol is excess. So read the question carefully. Suppose if it is mentioned hemiacetal, here it is mentioned acetal, but suppose if it is mentioned hemiacetal, in that case, correct option will be propanol methanol in stoichiometric amount. That is, in that case, option two will be correct, not this one. Okay, so be careful, read the question here. Identify A in the following reaction sequence. So, starting material is A, which is giving positive iodoform test. Now, iodoform test, though we have not, that is, which is basically haloform test, that we will also discuss here. But remember, that is positive when there is presence of CH3CO group, okay? Or CH3CHOH, this type of group. Then only this reaction positive. Now, A is undergoing addition with CH3MGBR, Greek nut, and then hydrolysis, acidic condition, and concentrated H2SO4. That means, if A is giving positive hydrophon, that means there is presence of carbonyl group and CH3MGBR we are adding. So when there is carbonyl, you are adding Grignat, what you will get? You will get alcohol. And you are also using concentrated H2SO4. That means alcohol undergoing dehydration, you will get CC double bond. And once you get CC double bond alkene, which is basically molecule B, now you are doing ozonolysis in presence of uh, ZNH2O, which is uh, reductive decomposition, used for reductive decomposition. So CC double bond will be broken, and in that position, there will be two carbonyl. If you look at the final compound, there are two carbonyl. So if you want to move in the backward direction, what you have to do? These two carbon, you have to join. Now, if you are joining these two carbon, you will get a five member ring like this. Here we have two methyl group, then CC double bond, and this is another methyl group. So better if I am numbering the carbons, it will be easy to understand. Suppose this is one, this is two, three, four, this is five, okay? So this is four, five, this is one, this is two, this is three. So this is actually the structure of B, right? Now in ozonolysis, there is no, uh, that is number of carbon, it is same. So it is, uh, that is benzene ring, six carbon, and this side, how many carbons you have? Three methyl and three carbon in the five member ring. So total six carbons are there, right? So if it is six carbon, in uh, final product, there is six carbon. In B also, there is six carbon, right? Now, if it is a structure of B, now if you move in retrosynthesis direction, OH group will be there. That is B you are getting after dehydration. So before dehydration, there is OH. Now the position of OH either at one or at five. 
Now, if the position of OH as at 1, then it will be like this. Okay. And if it is present at 5, that is another possibility. Now it will be this one. And how you are getting this product? By Grignard reagent addition. And remember, in Grignard reagent, there is one CH3 group that is coming. So if one CH3 group is coming, and we already know in B, there are total six carbon. One carbon is coming from CH3. That means in A, there should be five carbon. Now, based on this, if you look at the options, except benzene ring, five carbon should be there. Now, one, two, three, four, five. Look at option two, one, two, three, four. That means this cannot be correct. Look at option three, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is also not possible because this is carbonyl, another CST will come. Then it will be total seven carbon except the benzene ring. That is fixed. So this also cannot be correct. Look at option four. One, two, three, four, five. Here we also five. That means three and four, two. Option two and three, you can easily cancel. Among one and four, one will be correct. Now, if you consider structure one, and if Brignard it is added to this carbon, then two CH3 group and one OH, right? And if, if you consider option four, now, the Grignard methyl group that is added here. So, what you are getting? You will be getting OH and 2 methyl group. Right? Now, put among these two, because 2 and 4, 2 and 3, we have already cancelled. Use it as all this. So if it is, uh, that is C, this is the structure B that we have already CC double dot, okay? So this structure B and this is also B, both are actually same molecule, though it may look different, but it is actually same molecule. Let me number here. This is one. Just compare with the B structure that I have already drawn here. This is five. The carbon carrying two methyl, this is six. And this is two, three. This is four containing two methyl. Now you can find similarity with this one. Now, if this is the structure of B, we know that ozonolysis, this is bond broken. That means the previous structure before dehydration. This is the dehydration step. Now, the previous structure, one structure may be that OH group that is present at Sorry, sorry, one mistake I have done. This structure do not consider. Here, dehydration is taking in a different way because OH group is present here. It is not that dehydration is occurring by o at any OH group at these two positions. It is not like that. OH group is basically present if you break this CC bond. There is OH group and this OH group when you are using concentrated H2SO4, the hydrogen in aromatic ring and the OH, these two together, that will be removed in the form of uh, water. Okay, so this CC double bond that is already present in the initial starting material. So starting material as we have to find the structure of A. If you look at the options, all are already carrying one CC bond and it is giving positive iodoform test so we are stuck between these two two and three we have already cancelled in both this there is coch3 group present that means it will give iodoform test positive now when you are stuck between one and four and when you are moving in backward direction now you can see that if oh group is here that means carbonyl must be present at this carbon because one of the methyl group is coming from CH3 MGBR. 
so that is why carbonyl will be here okay and the position of carbonyl is also same if you compare one option one and four only this position of methyl group is different one is uh, at the carbon which is the next carbon of benzene ring but here it is attached to this carbon now if you look at the structure as final molecule is given so if you draw the structure before ozonolysis you will find structure b now if you look at the structure b so this is the position of methyl which is not here so that means option 4 it will give you uh, the correct structure that is the final product this one it is not option 1 so whenever you are getting this type of molecule one thing that i have done by based on which these two options are cancelled just count the number of carbon so in the final compound there is total five carbon except the benzene ring right now these five carbon one carbon coming from memgbr that means there should be one two three four five, sorry six carbon one two three four five six one carbon is coming from methyl that means five carbon must be there so five carbon is present only in option one and four because in two there is total four carbon in the chain in three there are total six so these two not possible now among one and four how we will understand which one is correct for that you have to do the retro pathway you have to draw the product that is before ozonolysis you have to join these two carbon if you join these two carbon you will get a five member ring and if you look at the five member ring properly you will see that the position of methyl it is not here it is in the next carbon so that is why option four will be correct not option one ammonia and its derivative they can also be treated as nucleophile so that is why we are discussing them under nucleophilic addition reaction now one example you have seen which is ph nh nh2 addition another one is nh2h addition so all these are under this type of reaction ammonia and its derivatives now when we are saying derivative now it means this type of structure ammonia is nh3 but if you replace one h with group z now these z may be different types depending on that there will be different names but in general if i write nh2z and here actual nucleophile is this nh2 so this nh2 that is the lone pair of a nitrogen that part is actually nucleophile so this will attack at the carbonyl carbon here acid catalyst required final molecule is like this so it is basically combination of two reaction one is first reaction is nucleophilic addition so when it will be added there will be coh and nhz but after removal of h2o that is second step is elimination then you are getting this type of c double bond nz so ammonia and its derivatives which is znh2 reacts with carbonyl compounds weakly acidic medium it should not be very strong because if it is very strong the lone pair over nitrogen that will be always importunated it will not be available anymore so that is why acidic medium but not very strong first it gives addition product but after that there is elimination of water molecule so that is why final product is c double bond n which is known as imine derivative now here the equilibrium favors the product formation because of rapid dehydration of the intermediate to form c double bond n so look at the mechanism general mechanism in presence of h plus the purpose of using H plus, that is weakly acidic medium, is to protonate this oxygen. Because when this oxygen is protonated, there will be this carbon, its electropositive character will increase. Because oxygen is now positively charged, it will draw electron density towards itself, so carbon will be more electron deficient. So the attacking tendency by the lone pair of NH2Z, that is lone pair of nitrogen, that will be high now. So that is why H plus is acting as catalyst. So this is the intermediate within third bracket this is actually the addition product the intermediate is actually the addition product not the final product is addition final product you are getting after elimination of oh and h from here and which is basically net removal of water and you are getting c double bond n z which is imine derivative now depending on 
different z group we can have so many variety see the first example you are seeing it is simple ammonia we have not taken any derivative it is directly ammonia so it will be imine because now the z is h then hydrazine now z is nh2 so that is why c c double bond in z phenyl hydrogen hydrogen is nh2 nh2 but phenyl hydrogen is one ph is present now the z is ph nh so here we have ph nh and the final compound its name is now also changing the first one is imine if your nucleophile is ammonia if your nucleophile is hydrogen it is hydrazone if it is phenyl hydrazine it is phenyl hydrazone now the fourth example see this is also derivative of phenyl hydrazine phenyl hydrazine is simple ph attached to nhnh but if the ph ring is like this see two for dinitrophenyl ring so that is why this is also ammonia derivative obviously but you can also say it is derivative of phenyl hydrazine so two for dinitro phenyl hydrazine uh, here the final product it will be like this because here this total large group is actually z right two for dinitro phenyl hydrazone and this molecule is also known as two uh, dnp test dnp test so this test is positive obviously with aldehyde and ketone and when this compound is formed it it is having a particular appearance which is red or uh, deep orange color solid so from this precipitation this particular color very intense red color or orange color we can understand that this is ident identification test for aldehyde or ketone that is any carbonyl group present or not and the reagent that we use for this identification of c double bond o is 2 for dinitrophenyl hydrogen this is known as dnp test look at the next reaction now the z is oh hydroxylamine is the name of this reagent so this is z c double bond in z name is oxime when it is semi carboxyde now semi carboxyde here z is co nh nh2 as if one hydrogen of ammonia replaced by co nh nh2 so if this is z now c double bond in this is z okay basically i it should be like this this is it not the other one and you can consider this is as if ammonia one hydrogen replaced by nacio nh2 so this is known as semi carboxyl final compound is semi carboxone and if it is amine that means one hydrogen of ammonia replaced by r group now this is it and this is also just like amine the first product but now instead of h you have r group so that is why it is substituted imine imine is when c double bond nh but if it is hydrogen is no uh, r group it is substituted in so here we have one application of this last reaction which is uh, addition of ammonia and this derivative to carbonyl compounds look at this reaction we have taken formaldehyde which is basically the simplest aldehyde possible for six molecules of acho four ammonia molecules if we use there is formation of this type of compound the so formaldehyde reacts with ammonia it forms hexamethylene tetraamine this molecule is known as hexamethylene because ch2 group methylene this is ch2 hexa six times and tetraamine 4n this is also known as eurotropin now why this is very important first of all this is very having very interesting structure it is Uh, bicyclic compound and uh, it is used in urinary antiseptic but it also has another use which is if you are doing nitration of this molecule ch2 whole 6 and 4 nitration of eurotropin under control condition it gives an uh, explosive which is known as rdx full form research and development explosive and this rdx it has a name particular which is known as cyclonite so this is eurotropin the structure is very interesting because it is bicyclic type of structure 6 methyl 1 2 3 4 5 6 
six and four nitrogen. So this is eurotropin uh, reaction between ACH and four NH3. So you will not find any similarity with uh, that is as you have seen the mechanism of how ammonia and its derivatives are added to carbonyl and then there is elimination of water it is completely it is not like that but still it is discussed discussed here because this is also reaction between aldehyde and ammonia so as application you may get a question based on this so that is why it is important for us to know though it is not exactly like nucleophilic addition okay so ch2 whole 6 n4 after nitration in presence of concentrated hno3 this is the structure which is cyclonite or rdx and this is known as cyclotrimethylene trinitramine in short rtx so synthesis of eurotropin which uh, which are the starting material formaldehyde and ammonia and this eurotropin directly it has one application which is urinary antiseptic but if it is undergoing uh, nitration reaction we are getting uh, explosive which is cyclonite Now, after finishing nucleophilic addition, so under nucleophilic addition, different types of reactions we have seen, that is, different types of nucleophiles we have used. Next type of reaction after nucleophilic addition is oxidation. Now, when we are saying oxidation, there will be separate discussion. One is oxidation of aldehyde, then oxidation of ketone. So, when it is oxidation of aldehyde, it is basically, see, this is a general. Uh, starting material RCHO that is aldehyde. Final product is carboxylic acid, oxidation product. Aldehydes they are very easily oxidized to carboxylic acid, and number of carbon atoms there is no change. See here also two carbon, uh, though we do not know what is R, but suppose if R is only one carbon, it is two carbon after reaction also there is no change in the number of carbon. Same. That means CC bond cleavage is not taking place. CHO group converted to CO2H group and any type of oxidizing agent that is you don't have to always use strong oxidizing agent it may be uh, strong or weak mostly the oxidizing agent that are used acidified potassium uh, dichromate acidic or alkaline game no4 chromic oxide CRO3 even so all these are strong basically but you can also use mild oxidizing agents such as tollens reagent Felling's reagent uh, these reagents separately will be discussed in detail, don't worry. But right now, just see, they are actually mild oxidizing agent, but you can use them. By using mild oxidizing agents also, you can oxidize the aldehyde to carboxylic acid. There is no problem. But if it is ketone, now both sides there is R group. There is no H. Now the oxidation is not so easy. You cannot use mild oxidizing agent because here you are just this H is replaced by OH. But in case of ketone, there is no CH bond. You have C, C bond both sides. So you have to break now CC bond. And that is what is so difficult. Now to break CC bond, you have to apply some strong oxidizing agent. So ketones are oxidized only under drastic condition or with powerful oxidizing agent like this. And there is cleavage of CC bond. Now, as there is CC bond cleavage, that means when you will be getting carboxylic acid, it will be uh, having lesser number of carbon compared to parent ketone. So, if it is R, C, O, R, this CC bond is clean. That means now the number of carbon atoms less. So, from this part, you will be getting one carboxylic acid. From another part, you will be getting another carboxylic acid. Now, if it is not symmetrical, suppose if it is R, C, O, R prime. Then how to know which side will be broken? Left hand side or right hand side? So for oxidation of unsymmetrical ketone, you have to follow Pofov's rule, which states that during the oxidation of unsymmetrical ketone, which C, C, O bond will be broken? That C, C, O bond will be broken uh, in such a way that the keto group stays with the smaller alkyl group. So see, here we have taken the first molecule is acetone. It is symmetrical. There is no problem whether you break this side or this side. You will get mixture of formic acid, acetic acid. Though formic acid ultimately it is converted to H2 and CO2. But these two you will get first. So CHTCOH you are getting from uh, CHTCO fragment. Another part is one carbon. 
so whatever side you break it is actually always mixture of formic acid acetic acid but if you have taken this type of unsymmetrical ketone where one side you have methyl another side propyl so this cc bond will be broken why because see keto group will always stay with the smaller alkyl group and methyl is smaller so that is why co will remain with it so from the right hand side this part you will be getting ethanoic acid because it is containing two carbon and the other part is three carbon so the carbon one carbon will be converted to co2h so when you will write the product of oxidation of ketone you just have to break according to pofov's rule and just count the number and from C, uh, each part keeping the carbon number same you just have to add co2 each so you are getting propanoic acid and ethanoic acid but if it is the alternative suppose if this side is broken which is not actually but suppose if it is broken you will be getting four carbon carboxylic acid another side it is only formic acid but that is not you are getting you are getting three carbon and two three two okay so this is the rule profox rule based on which oxidation of ketones possible some more oxidation reaction you will also see uh, today we end here thank you for listening